Yo, what up? How you guys doing out there today? This is your boy Roto Beast. I'm here to present you my NBA morning shoot around for Thursday, December 12th. If you're new to this channel, please make sure to click the subscribe button below. This is where you can watch all my NBA, NFL, and MLB videos. And if you haven't come and checked out our website here at DFSGG.com, you're absolutely missing out. We have all the tools to help you compete with the pros day in and day out, including a complete optimizer, tons of content, Daily Fando and Jeff Keith Cash signups. Hey, we're truly a one stop shop for our DFS needs. So make sure to come check out the site here at DFSCheatCheat.com. So, got a small little four game slate today. Um, definitely some, some fancy relevancy here. Um, the biggest thing for me is there's a couple, uh, positions that definitely have pay down spots. There's a couple positions that it's hard to pay down. There's not really any good value. Uh, unfortunately, we'll start at point guard and point guard is a spot where I don't think that there is very much value there. Um, you know, that you can feel comfortable with. So, uh, we'll start there. We'll go, we'll, we'll work our way through each position. As always, kind of give you my top five plays at each position to kind of help you build your player pool. And, um, yeah, let's go. So we'll start, um, you know, at, like I said, at point guard, we'll go with Luka Doncic first. I mean, Luka Doncic is having a great season, MVP type season, triple double upside any night. Gets a pretty good matchup tonight against Detroit. This is a game that Dallas definitely should win. Um, you know, I like him. If you, if you have the money to pay up for him, he's going to give you a really solid floor, going to give you a, a really good ceiling as well. Um, you know, so I, I think that Doncic is a guy that you can look at. He is the highest priced guy on the slate. Um, so it's all about really if we can, uh, fit some really good pieces around him. And I think there is some really good plays at other positions at fair prices that you can work with it, um, to get Doncic in your lineup. So we'll start with Doncic. Great play today. Uh, then we'll move down. I'm going to go with Ben Simmons next going against Boston. Um, 8,300 is a very, is a very fair price tag for Ben Simmons. Um, you know, he's a guy that does a little bit of everything, fills up the stat sheet. Um, you know, 8,300, like I said, we need about, 42 for value. We got him projected at 40. So we got him right there at about five times value. Um, you know, he's a really good mid tier play. On the flip side of things, Kimba Walker going against Philadelphia, 7,700. Man, he's a really good play as well. I think I like Kimba Walker a little bit more than Ben Simmons. It's a little bit cheaper price tag. Um, Kimba Walker can score the ball a little bit better, but Ben Simmons does do a little bit of the other stats. Um, so like I said, I think they're both really good plays. I probably would go, uh, Kimba Walker kind of, uh, you know, 1A and, uh, Ben Simmons 1B if I'm talking about those particular guys. Um, then, you know, I, I like Jamal Murray going against Portland. He, he is a game time decision. If he does play, I think it's a pretty good spot going to head to head with Damian Lillard. Um, Damian Lillard isn't the best defensive player. He's more of an offensive player. Uh, Jamal Murray has been playing very well. So I think, you know, Jamal Murray's in a pretty good spot here. Um, last guy I'll mention at point guard, DeJounte Murray. It's all about minutes with him. If he's going to play the minutes, he's a guy that, that can definitely produce, definitely, you know, does a little bit in every single um, stat department. Like I said, it's all about the minutes. Going against Cleveland, it's a very good matchup for him. Um, I like him in this spot. I think that he can have a really good game. He definitely has some upside even when he does play, you know, limited minutes. Uh, the upside is there. He's a baller. Moving on to shooting guard. Um, you know, we talked about DeJounte Murray in a good spot against Cleveland. Um, but, you know, DeMar DeRozan going against Cleveland as well. I like this spot for him. The thing about uh, DeMar DeRozan is the same thing with McCollum. I'm going to mention McCollum next. Uh, both of them are a little bit more scoring dependent. Um, that's kind of the the thing that I don't like about these guys. Um, definitely like DeMar DeRozan a lot more, though, going against Cleveland compared to McCollum going against Denver. Denver is a really good defensive team, and that's the reason I didn't really talk about Damian Lillard at the point guard spot. I really don't like attacking Denver's defense. Uh, I mean, I think they both still are, deep, are GPP plays, talking about you know Lillard and McCollum. I just don't really like, like I said, attacking that Denver defense. DeMar DeRozan, 8,200. I think he's going to give you a decent floor. I don't know how much upside he's going to give you at 8,200, especially if this game gets out of hand. Um, you know, then he's not going to play his full allotment of minutes. But nonetheless, though, I like him. I think DeMar DeRozan's in a really good spot. Mention CJ McCollum. I think he's a pretty good GPP play as well. Um, then we'll go on the, on the Cleveland side of things. A couple guys I like on the little bit cheaper and, 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 and um, Shooting guard is a position. There's three guys that I really like that I think you could pay down for. First, we'll talk about Jordan Clarkson, 4,500, going against San Antonio. He's a guy that even if this game does get out of hand, he's going to get some run. He's the first guy off the bench. He'll play some garbage time minutes. 
And uh, Jordan Clarkson definitely has some upside. He can score the ball. Um, you know, he gets you a couple of little other peripheral stats as well. Gary Harris, he's been playing a ton of minutes. He's just been shooting horrible this year. But at 4,500, he's coming in, you know, at a very, very uh, dirt cheap price tag. Still starting, still playing 30 plus minutes, still playing some really good defense. If he can knock down some threes, he can easily crush this uh, 4,500 price tag. So the upside is there. Um, Gary Harris, like I said, I think he's in a, a good spot here. Also, Josh Richardson, he's been hurt um, coming back from injury, 4,400. The price tag is down. Um, he's a guy, he starts a shooting guard. Um, he also stays in there and plays back on point guard as well. The minutes are going to start trending back up as he gets back in the rotation. Um, this is just too cheap of a price tag for him. The guy has 30 fantasy points outside, gets you 6X um, on this price tag fairly easily. Um, so I like all three of these guys, 4,500, 4,500, and 4,400. Um, as your, you know, your shooting guard number two, you can even play both of them. Uh, two of the three at, at your shooting guard spot and pay up elsewhere. That'll help you get Doncic also if you want to go that route. Uh, next we'll go to, to, a small forward, um, you know, we'll start, you know, I'll start with, uh, you know, Tobias Harris. I think Tobias Harris is in a pretty good spot going against Boston. He's an overpriced, I mean, not overpriced. He's an oversized small forward. So he usually he always has kind of a mismatch at his position. Um, you know, 7,400, he's been very steady on the year. They gave him a big contract. They trust the guy. He, they, they played through him some, um, some as well. And, you know, he's going to get, you know, he has double-double upside any night to get you some rebounds and stuff, plays a little bit of defense. 7400 I think it's a fair price tag. He definitely is in play. On the flip side of things, Jalen uh, Brown, he got a big contract as well. The guy's been playing very, very well on the season, 6700 Uh The guy, you know, the, the most impressive thing for me is I didn't know that Jalen Brown was a scorer the way he's been scoring. He's definitely been killing it. Um, you know, this year scoring the ball very well, has some upside at 6,700. It should be a very competitive game between Boston and Philadelphia, two of the better teams in the East, and they're both kind of have a chip on the shoulder and want to prove that they're the better team, um, you know, in the Eastern Conference. So I like, you know, I talked about Tobias Harris. I like him. I like Jalen Brown as well. A couple other guys will mention Will Barton going against Portland. I like Will Barton a lot. He's playing the minutes. A guy can really fill up the stat sheet, score the ball. Um, you know, think of him for being a guard. Uh, well, we got him a small four. They got him at small four, but in my eyes, Will Barton's more of a guard. And he rebounds very well for a guard. Get you those extra little, um, uh, little fancy points that we're looking for. So Will Barton, I think he is a pretty good play today. Uh, at 6,600. A couple more guys that I'll quickly just throw out there. We'll, we'll move down. A couple guys we can pay down for. Luke Kennard, 5,300. Um, you know, he's a guy he's, he's been getting a ton of run, and we played him a lot earlier in the year when there was injuries. Uh, whenever he gets the opportunity, he's a guy that definitely can ball out, um, you know, fill up the stat sheet, and he can really score the ball also. So 5,300. Uh, we got him projected at, at almost 25 fantasy points. It's going to get you close to 5X. Um, you know, I, I think that's a pretty good spot for him. He is a little bit more of a GPP play, don't get me wrong. But, I mean, I like him, and he could come in lower owned as well. Last but not least, I like this guy, Kevin Porter Jr. Uh, for Cleveland, 4,000. The guy's uh, starting to pick it up. He's playing, um, you know, fairly well. At 4,000, all you need is 20 for value. We got him projected right at 20. 5x he's a guy we could potentially look to pay down for uh you know at the small forward position moving on to power forward uh you know we'll start at the top i mean we got you can look at porzingis going against detroit it is a little bit more of a tough matchup you know banging down there with drumming blake griffin etc uh but i mean i like him 7600 is a very fair price tag we got him projected at 39 fantasy points which is a little bit over five times value Five times value is what we're looking for for cash games. So if we got a projected at 39, definitely I'll take that, kind of move on. Um, and I think this is the game that Dallas will win. Porzingis should have a pretty good game here. Um, you know, you got uh, LaMarcus Aldridge going against Cleveland, 8,200. He's going to be going head-to-head with Kevin Love. Kevin Love is a little too small for Aldridge, in my opinion. He could shoot over him, and this is a spot where Aldridge can have a really good game. Um, I like him, man. I think that, that he can have a, a solid game here, double double upside. On the flip side, I think you could look at Kevin Love as well, seventy four hundred going against Aldridge. Aldridge isn't the best defensive player. Kevin Love is the best player on Cleveland, and you know whenever he plays, they're looking to get him the ball. Um, so I, yeah, man, I think that this is a pretty good spot for Kevin Love. I like both of these guys. 
Um, I think they both are probably GPP players, but I got to consider both of them. Blake Griffin at 7,100. He's a guy that I'm really liking at power four. I just think Blake Griffin is too cheap at 7,100. Um, he definitely has the upside. He may have not been showing it so much this year, but it's still Blake Griffin. And I mean, the guy can really score the ball. He can rebound. Um, he's getting a couple more assists this year. Uh, going against Dallas, I like, I like the price tag. I just think it's really too cheap. Blake Griffin, I think is probably my favorite, uh, power forward, um, on this slate. And it really has to do a lot with this price tag. Talking about having a low price tag. Paul Millsap, game time decision. 5,200 is just too cheap for Paul Millsap. Um, you know, I understand he's having an up and down season, but I mean, all you really need is 26 for value. We got him projected at 24. Millsap has 40 fantasy point upside. Um, we got to wait on this news. Um, so he is a game time decision. If he does play, I like him. If he doesn't play, then there's going to be some value opened up at the, the big spot. Um, you know, for Denver, we can look at guys. You know, we can look at a couple guys like, you know, you can look at a guy like Mason Plumlee. Um, you can look at a guy like Jeremiah Grant to get some extra run. Um, so we got to wait on this injury news because it may also open up some value if he if he doesn't play. But if he does, I like him at 5,200. Um, last, we'll finish off at center. Um, you know, Joel Embiid, I think this is a pretty good spot going against Boston. Boston doesn't have a really big guy that can kind of um, give Joel Embiid some fits. And 10000 is a fair price tag for him. We got him projected at 51 fantasy points, just a little bit over 5x five, five what we're looking for. So definitely think that uh, Joel Embiid is probably the top center on this slate. You got Andre Drummond. He's a game time decision. Uh, if he does play, you know, I think this is a decent spot going against Dallas. Dallas doesn't have a really big center that can give him some fits. If he's out, then there'll be some value opened up. So this is some more news that we got to wait on as the day kind of goes about. Um, but I think the Drummond is in a pretty good spot if he does play. Jokic, 8,800. I mean, Jokic just he hasn't been playing the best on the season. The price tag, 8,800. We got him projected at 45 fantasy points, which is a little bit over 5X. So you got to like him if we got him projected at 5X. It isn't the easiest matchup going against Hassan Whiteside, who's a big body, uh, who could, you know, kind of give Jokic some trouble. Whiteside can run up and down the floor a little bit as well. On the flip side, we're talking about Whiteside going against Jokic. I think both of these guys going against each other, it's a little bit tough just because I don't like big guys going against each other. One of them usually tends to get in foul trouble. That's just kind of how it usually works out. But I do think both of them are in play. Um, it's, just, it's just a matter of who we trust more to kind of stay out of foul trouble. If we're talking about foul trouble, I probably would say Whiteside probably – We'll get in foul trouble before Jokic. Um, I think Jokic is a little bit smarter of a player, I would say. Um, nonetheless, both of them are in play. Last but not least, Tristan Thompson going against San Antonio. They don't have a, a real center, a big guy that, that can go down there and bingo Tristan Thompson. I think he has double-double upside here. Um, and, and I think that he's a GPP player that we can look at. Lastly, we talk about Millsap. If Millsap is out, even if Millsap is, uh, plays, Mason Plumlee, you know, he's the first big off of the bench. And I think he's a guy that we can look at in GPPs. Um, and if he happened to, uh, Millsap happened to be out and he was in the draw a start or even just get a bump in minutes at 3,800, he's a guy that would be a really good value play. So we got to wait on some news. Um, so that's really where I'm at with today's slate. If you want a more in-depth analysis, make sure to check out the site, dfscheatsheet.com. And hey, good luck on guys' contest tonight, all right? Peace out.